eternity in our hearts, we really can't understand eternity. We really can't. Because it's in a dimension outside of the dimensions God has limited us to, time and space, for instance. And when the Bible says, Jesus said, I come that you might have eternal life. What does that mean? Uh, forever and ever. Everlasting. Those things we can only try to get a handle on because we are limited to time. So we can understand time a little bit, right? Yeah. This morning I want to talk to you about time. One of my favorite verses in the Bible, especially at the beginning of the new year, and even though we're well into it right now, is this the 16th? 17th. Uh, but you're all familiar with this verse. Uh, the uh, longest chapter in the Bible is the longest chapter in the Bible. Psalms 119. Now it just happens, coincidence, I guess. But the psalm just before that is Psalms 118. <laughs> what? What? I was wondering you look good. So Psalm 118, verse 24. Can you quote that one? This is the day of the Lord. Great song too. I should have told you. No, I'm sorry. This is the day the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Now, some people believe and teach that every psalm is really messianic. I mean, you can look, if you look in all the psalms, 150 of them, you'll find some reference to the Lord's return, to the coming of the Lord. And you can find that in the 118th psalm. There's something in there about his return. So some people think that the other name psalm is messianic. Not as obvious as some of the, of the other psalms. But when we talk about this is the day, you know, one of these days possibly, very possibly, we're going to wake up and say this is the day. This is the day the Lord's coming. Or, looking at it in a different direction, the Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die. <laughs> right. We all can reference the day we were born. But did you know that you have an expiration date on you? Like that jug of milk that's in the refrigerator and all that? I don't know where we find our expiration date. Maybe it's on the bottom of my foot or the back of my neck. I, have never, I can't read that. But we all have an expiration date. Apart from Jesus coming for his church, the rapture of the church. And one of these days, could we say the other the other day I was preaching and I said, who's that guy that said, live every day like it's your last because one day it will be. Ray Charles, wasn't it? Ray Charles? I can't remember. Some of them, I can't remember. I said, well, that's good advice. <laughs> I'll take credit for that. Actually, I can't take credit for giving it to When I was a young preacher, I said, I'm going to be original or nothing. Ten years later, I was both. <laughs> Somebody else, if I can use it, I'm going to put it in my gun and shoot it. Now, I don't think I can aim that phrase, but one of these days it will be our last, right? Yeah. Might wake up someday and say, This is the day the Lord has made. He's appointed it. I'm going to step out into that eternity I don't understand. Today will happen. So I want to talk to you about that verse. This is the day the Lord hath made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. What's the first slide look like up there? Just introduction, isn't it? It's our scripture verse. How to live 24 hours a day in 2016. Now we've got 300, 350, 48 days left in the year. 348 days left in the year. This is a leap year. Hey, by the way, it's a leap year. Yeah, so we got two. We got 366 days this year. 366 days, all right. So, six days. by the way, this is Ken's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Psalm, and Moses wrote the 90th Psalm, but Moses said, our lives are like a field. They're like a flower that looks in his palm. It's like a story that's told. And he's just over it before you know it. What was you know about it? My son. Forget me.
And Moses went on to say great advice in the 90th Psalm. I think it's verse 12, I'm not sure. But he says, teach us to number our days that we might apply our hearts to wisdom. I did that last night. I am, uh, my birthday was in August, August the 13th. I have uh, lived 72 years, so I know that uh, I teach us to number our days. I have lived, what did I say, 26,630 days. 26,630 days. Wow. Now that's way past three score and ten, the Bible says. Three score and ten, that's 70. And maybe by measure of strength, you might get a little bit more added to it. I hope so. But he says, teach us to number our days that we might apply our hearts to wisdom. Wisdom. I look like you're interested this morning. Did everybody, did everybody have enough to go around with a little the notes? Did people write off? Okay. 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 Over here, this guy really needs to now the Bible says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. Right? James chapter 1. If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. Wisdom comes from God. And God wants you to be wise. Not worldly wise, but God wants you to be wise in this subject we're going to talk about this morning. Time. Time. We get our handles on time because we wear watches and we look at calendars. But, uh, you know, God's calendar always says today. Today. This is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. God's watch always says, now, now. We live our life in three time zones, past, present, and future. Well, our focus this morning is going to be on the present, and that's what God wants our focus on, the present. Ah, that's exciting. This is the day the Lord has made. Think about that. He made this day. And He made you. And He made you for this day. And He made you to be here, not by accident or coincidence, but on purpose God brought you here this morning so you could learn this lesson and leave wiser than you were when you came. That we might apply our hearts to wisdom. You know, I, could, I thought of a lot of songs actually came. One day at a time. Sweet Jesus. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Now he was talking about abundant life. On other occasions he talks about eternal life. But this verse, this is the day the Lord has made, I will trust and be glad in it. He's talking about in time, how to live your life in time, how to redeem the time, as the Bible says, and how to have an abundant life today, today, and enjoy the blessings of today. You know, uh, Jesus said in John chapter, 7, chapter 17 and verse 4, Father. Now, he only lived 33 years down here before he went to the cross, right? 33, 33 days, something like that. But he said, Father, I've done everything you sent me to do. I have glorified your name and said everything you sent me to say. Wouldn't you like to come to the end of your life, whether it's, whether it's 16 years or 60 years or 30 years or 100 years to be able to say, got to go. Use my time wisely. I did everything God sent me to do. Freddie Fender had a song. Then a long time ago, Freddie Fender had a song. Good you know what Freddie Fender was saying? Wasted days and wasted nights. Remember that? <laughs> now I knew that's another waste. And you have never wasted any time. Listen, you have no idea. I have no idea. Just how important time. Time is life. You only go around once in life. Get it right. Redeem the time. The Bible uses that expression in many, many places. Redeem the time. Ephesians chapter 5. Wake up. Walk circumspectly. Spectacle, spectacle. We get our word spectacles from that word certain spectacle. He says, look around. Certain sense. Certain spectacle. Circumference. Look around. Open your eyes. The days are evil. So redeem the time. Let me 
filled with the Spirit and not drunk with wine. Sober, vigilant, watching. All right, I got to use my notes. To, to, I normally don't use them, but I have to this morning because I don't have too much to say. Jesus lived 33 years. And he had got it all done. By the way, Alexander the Great lived 33 years. And he died with a broken heart because there wasn't any more world for him to come. Now, we don't all have the same amount of brains. We don't have the same amount of money. We don't have the same amount of beauty or strength. But we all have the same amount of time in a day. In a day. The same amount of time in every day. 24 hours. And today is God's gift to you. This is the day of the Lord. How do we live it? Live it life one day at a time. Next slide. Living life one day at a time. Let God add life to your years and not just years to your life. As you've often heard it said, today is the first day of the rest of your life. I think this is the next slide I want you to point uh, Isn't there a, a one on there that says, uh, if each day is a God given day? Is that on there? Verse says, This is the day the Lord has made. It's a God given day. You can recognize that. What's the next thing? Each day is, if it's made, if we make it because He's the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. That means it not only is given, but it should be governed by the Lord, right? And what's the next phrase? If each day is recognized as God given and is made God governed, then it will become God led. I will rejoice. That's a good outline. Each day is God-given. It should be God-governed. If it is, it will be god glad. That's the secret of joy, friends. Right there is the secret of joy. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Why? Because it's God-given, and I'm going to see to it it's God-covered. It's going to be god glad, glad because I'll be right in the center of God's will in my life. I was going to add to that phrase, each day should be God-guided. God-guided. Because He has a plan for us today. He has a plan for you. He has a plan for you to be in this world. I think I told you once that word guidance, G-U-I, D-A-N-C-E. That's a G-U-I stand for God and you. God, you, and I. I put it like that. G-U-I. God, you, and I. And the rest of that word is dance. God, you, and I are just dancing through life together. That's, a, that's a, a life guided by the Lord. He wants you to enjoy it. I'm not a dancer, but I, I think you're supposed to enjoy dancing with you. Guidance. God, you, and I dancing through life. And I know this much about dancing. Somebody's supposed to lead and somebody's supposed to fall. If both people want to lead, it gets in the middle. Real confusion, right? God wants to lead your life. That's the secret of joy. God given day. God governed day. God guided day. Becomes a God gladdened day. This is the day the Lord hath made. Oh, I love that verse. It means so much to me. Go to the next one. All right. Five principles about today. From this little verse, let's draw five very basic principles on how you can enjoy life. And how you can have an abundant life. We're talking about time. We can understand that. God wants you to understand time. You're in it. But you need to know how precious and how valuable it is. Number one, every day is a God-provided day. God has given us every day. Made by God. We need to write that on the morning when we get up this day. Made by God. He's the creator of time. And we all have that same amount as we mentioned before. 24 hours every day. 1,440 minutes, 86,400 seconds. The writer of Lamentations said in chapter 3 and verse 22, It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. His compassion fails not. They are new every morning. Every morning. Great is His faithfulness. Every morning. I think I got it this morning and said, Lord, before I go to 
before I do anything else, thank you for being so merciful. Thank you for being so gracious. Thank you for your, you know, you have every right to consume me. You just blow me off like a piece of dust. But you, you love me. And you're working in my life today. Jim was saying this morning, we are to love people. Whatever their hang-ups and problems. You know, Jesus was hung up for our hang-ups, right? <laughs> he went to the cross for our sins. And I've told people many, many times, God doesn't change you in order to love you. God loves you in order to change you. Amen? Amen. God doesn't change you in order to love you. God doesn't say, you get your act together, and you quit doing this and start doing that, and God will love you and give you a shot. No, God doesn't change you in order to love you. That's why we sing that song, just as I am. Without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. That's our plea, the blood of Jesus. And so we come to him because we know he loves us. Every day is a provided day. Think of that. God made this. This is the day the Lord has circled that word in your Bible there. Made. This is the day the Lord has made. He made this day. That sun came up because God in his faithfulness has caused that sun to come up every day. There's only one time in history where it stood still. God was behind that bloody. What does that mean? What the judge is And God caused the sun to stand still. Every day this provided day. Go to the next slide. Every day, and I like this one. The next part. Every day is present. By the way, these out this outline all begins with the letter D. Each word, important word. Every day is a present day. I don't know which word is the most important in that little verse, Psalms 118, verse 24, but um, the second word is pretty important. This is. Does that sound like present tense to you? I told you a little bit earlier that we all live in three time zones past, present, and future. Now, too many times we get hung up on the past. There's two days that can destroy you from enjoying this day. Keep your thumb. What are those two days? Thursday and Saturday? No. <laughs> Yesterday and tomorrow. Two days can prevent you from the joy and the blessings and the presence and recognizing God's purpose and divine power. Today, if you get hung up on the past, Jesus said, take no thought of tomorrow. Sufficient unto the day are the evil. Every day is going to have its problems. Every day in your life, there'll be some problems, there'll be some difficulties, there'll be some decisions to make. Every day, they're not exempt. You're not exempt. Sufficient unto the day are the evils thereof. But if you start borrowing on tomorrow's grace or today's problems, you won't have enough to go around tomorrow. <laughs> forget about tomorrow. And forget about the past. Paul says, forgetting those things which are behind. Where's that at? Philippians chapter 3. Forgetting those things which are behind, I press for the mark of the Christ, the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. How many people do you know that go through life looking through the rearview mirror? <laughs> oh, you really wreck your car if you spend too much time looking in the rearview mirror. But a lot of people go through life looking at yesterday. All my troubles seem so awful away. I believe in yesterday. Bologna. <laughs> Paul said, forgetting those things that are behind. What do we need to forget behind? Past guilt? Past grudges? Past grief? Even past glory? Right. They're behind us. They're behind us. This is the day the Lord hath made. Live for today. Enjoy it. Smell the roses. You don't go by and you sip it. And enjoy the day. Sip it for all the blessings and goodness that God has for you in it. Tomorrow's in the womb of time. Yesterday's in the tomb of time. Today, today, it is a present day. A present day. <coughs> Somebody said tomorrow really never comes. Only on the fool's calendar. Matthew Henry said, have you ever heard of Matthew Henry? Mm -hmm. Great Bible commentary, commentary you can get by Matthew Henry. He said his favorite verse was Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 25. Do you know what that verse says? 
as your days are, so shall your strength be. He said, that's a great, that was his favorite verse in the Bible. As my days are, so, it's a promise from God. It's a promise from God. You don't know what problems you're going to have today, but God says, I'll be right there with you. And I've got the strength and the power and the wisdom to guide you in that day. As your days are, so shall your strength be. It is a provided day. This is the day the Lord has made. It is a present day. I like this one. Go to the number one, the third one. Every day is a precious day. Every day is a precious day. Hmm. I mentioned that verse to you a moment ago in Psalms 90, verses 9 through 12. Our lives are like a vapor, three score and ten above my measure of strength, maybe ten more. Teach us to number our days that we might apply our hearts to wisdom. The, the uh, average lifespan in America is uh, right now about 25,550 days for a man. Women live longer. I don't know why women live longer. Mm -hmm. Any of you guys have the answer to that one? Because they're better. Uh, <laughs> somebody says it's because of the weakness of the stronger sex or the weaker sex that we live shorter lives. <laughs> I don't know if that's the reason. Yeah. <laughs> but Ken can take his, you know, he's lived 61 years, or 65 years. Multiply that times 365. Give or take a few days in there for the leap years and all that takes place. <laughs> But you can, you can figure out pretty close to how many days you got left. On average, how many days you got left. I've been doing this for years. How many days do I have left? On average, I don't know for sure. But I know I don't have, you know, I, I told the group the other night, I said, I'm running out of sunsets. I know that. My pony's slowing down. That's an old cowboy phrase. I'm running out of sunsets. And that's why I apply our heart to wisdom. And because every day is a precious day, let me give you some hints on how to apply your heart to wisdom. Begin each day alone with God. Start a day and go alone with God. David said, early in the morning when I see you. Check it in. Put your elbows on the windowsill of your life and look up into heaven and say, Lord, what do you got for me today? I'm checking in. Reporting for duty. This day be gone before I know it. Time goes so rapidly. And set priorities. You know, life, life is not simple. It'd be simple if it was. But life is not just a, talk, a choice between bad and good. It wouldn't be simple if it was. It's not. Life is not a choice between the bad and the good. Life is a choice between the good and the best. We can busy ourselves doing good things and, and miss the best. So establish some priorities in your life. Don't go around moaning and griping and say, well, I need more time. I don't have enough time. And live each day in the power of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 5, 14 through 18. Paul says, wake up! Walk circumspectly. Look around. The days are evil. And then he says, redeem the time that you might know what the will of God is. Live your life in the power of the Holy Spirit. Redeeming. Redeeming. Instead of losing it. And then another verse I put down on recognizing life is precious is James 4.17. James says, when you know what you want to do, and you don't do it, now this is called procrastination. Putting it off. I can't spell it, but I know what it means. Procrastination. And James says, if you know what you want to do today, and you don't do it today, and put it off to tomorrow. He says, that is sin, folks. He that knoweth what he ought to do, and doeth it unto him, it is what? Say that word. Sin. Sin. Just putting things off. Do it today. All right, we've got to hustle on here. Number four. Every day is a passing day. Jesus said in John chapter 9 and verse 4, I must do the work of him who sent me while it is still too late. The night cometh when it will be too late, when no man should work. Every day is a passing day. 
There's some things you cannot do with time. You can't say it. You know, I'm just going to take those two hours and I'm going to abandon it. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll use it on Friday. <laughs> no, you don't use it, you what? You lose it. You can't save time. You can't borrow time. You can't make time. I told my grandson the other day. He's not going to church. I said, and I said, I mean, you've got to take time for God. You don't make time. I have not met anybody that can make time. Only God can make time. See, you don't make time. Oh, I'm going to make time for this. I'm going to make time. No, you don't. You can't. You have to take time from something else to do what you're supposed to do, right? If God's given you 24 hours, that's all you're going to get today. So you can't save it, borrow it, make it, and store it, and stretch it, and share it. <laughs> you use it or you lose it. Great missionary Robert Moffat said, and I love this quote, it's been in my heart for years. He said, we will have all of eternity to separate our victories, but we have only a few short moments in time to win them. Wow. That's pretty heavy. That's worth writing down and putting in the margin of your Bible. Not original. I hope that 98% of it is for the Bible. We will have all of eternity to celebrate our victories, but only a few short moments in time to win them. Um, in a lost and found article in the newspaper, these words were lost one goal an hour. 60 diamond minutes, no reward offered, gone forever. Here's a poem. I thought I had it memorized this morning, but I don't. When I was a child, I laughed and wept and time crept. When as a youth, I dreamed and talked and time walked. When I became a full-grown man, time ran. When older still, I daily grew, time flew. And soon I shall be passing on. Time gone. I've asked physicists to try to explain to me why it is that the older we grow, the quicker time grows. Have you noticed that? Yet? I'm not going to get tired. I mean, it is true, isn't it? Why does time seem to go faster, 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 faster? What's the last one? Every day is a provided day. Every day is a present day. Every day is a precious day. Every day is a passing day. Oh, every day is a providential day. <clears throat> Maybe the most important word in this verse, as we unpackage this verse, is the word will. This is the day the Lord hath made. Now there's a choice to be made, isn't it? God made the day. God provided. It's a provided day. It's a present day, it's a precious day, it's a passing day. Wait a minute, it's a providential day. There's opportunities in this day. I will, there's the big word, I will. It's choice. God's given you freedom to decide what you're going to do with the day. Life is God's gift to you. What you do with that life is your gift back to Him. And life is filled with so many decisions. I will rejoice. Now, how do you do that? It's when you understand that this day you can write Romans 8, 28 on top of it, right? In all things, I know God is at work in my life today for my good because He loves me. And to those that love Him are called to His purpose. So this life, this day is a day of purpose. And God loves me. And God's working in my life this day. Yeah, there will be problems and difficulties and trials and unexpected things that happen in my life today. But the Bible says, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Man, I see glee busting out all over your faces here this morning. <laughs> I know that you could, you could give me a litany of problems and disappointments and discouragements and frustrations you've got in your life today. You think they caught God by surprise? They might caught you by surprise. You think they caught me? In everything. 
the Bible says. Give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I heard a story about a lady that was on a train. Sitting across the aisle was a couple, obviously very rich. He had a beautiful suit on. She had rings. She had a gorgeous fur coat on. And they were just fighting and arguing in the front. And just carried on as they were riding this train together. And then she got in a conversation with a man. And what do you do for a living? You must be very wealthy and very rich. And you, 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 the way you dress and everything. And he told her what she did. But all this time, they, they, they were fighting with each other. She was, his wife's complaining about everything the man. And she turned to the wife and said, and what do you do? Her husband said, oh, she's in the manufacturing business. Oh, well, what do you manufacture? Again, the wife didn't have an answer for that. But the man says, she manufactures problems. <laughs> she manufactures all kinds of fears and difficulties and things in her life. You know people like that? And, and, and you go through life missing the joy, not sipping the wine, not smelling the roses, not being thankful for everything. This is the day the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Philippians 4 4. Rejoice, Lord, always. And again, I say, rejoice. Give me thanks always for all things. In everything, give thanks. Most men live lives in quiet desperation. Frustration. They die with a song they never sing. And they feel frustrated because they never measured up to what they could be. Discontent. Discontent. Why do you think so many people bought lottery tickets last week? Because they thought the secret of joy was winning the lottery. Listen, I feel like I won the lottery when I gave my heart to Jesus. Man, that's what I got it. Suppose I would have won a bit. The writer of Hebrews says, the Holy Spirit says, today, today, if you hear my voice, 
Is there more to that verse? No, but there's not. Another verse. Another verse. <laughs> Proverbs 27.1. Boast not thyself of tomorrow. For you don't know what a day will bring. Now, the writer of Proverbs here, and Proverbs is a wisdom book, right? And God wants to give you wisdom. Anybody lacks wisdom, then they ask of God. Number your days, apply your heart to wisdom. Here's a great wisdom statement. Avoid arrogance. Boast not thyself. You don't strut your way through life thinking you've got everything under control. You don't. Boast not thyself of tomorrow. You may not even get to it. I have preached sermons to people who died within a few days after they heard me preach. They didn't know they were going to die. They went home to the church and checked out. That was the day the Lord had made for them to go to heaven. They didn't know that. So beware of arrogance. Oh, I know it all. You don't. And beware of ignorance. You don't know what a day will bring. You don't know. My granddaughter took off Friday, going up to Lakeside in her little car. Got to Salt River Canyon. Encountered a landslide, a lot of rocks coming down the mountain. Nearly knocked her car off the road in that canyon. She had to drive over a great big rock, knocked down her transmission, oil pan, left her stand. She didn't know what happened when she got up. You don't know what a day will bring. Avoid arrogance. Recognize the ignorance we have in our life. So, the third word is vigilance. Vigilance. Walk circumspect. Redeem the time. Keep your eyes wide open. Trust in the Lord. Be vigilant. For you don't know what a day will bring. How to live 24 hours a day in 2016. Let's bow our heads together in prayer. Father in heaven. Thank you for the day. Thank you for the chance to be together. Adore you, worship you, praise you, recognize your presence. Thank you for your faithfulness. Your mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The sun came up. God, forgive us for taking that for granted. It's a beautiful day outside. We have this freedom to worship you. God, help us. Not to waste our time, but to redeem it. God, help us if you give us another day, another week, another month, even the rest of this year, to be able to say 349 days from now, I glorified your name and did everything you sent me to do. Have you given your heart to Jesus? Have you invited him into your life? I would be afraid to live another day. Jesus in my heart. Because I don't know what another day might bring. This might be my last one. Have you given your heart to Jesus? Do it today. Today, if you hear his voice, the Bible says, harden not your heart. Today is the day of salvation. God gives absolutely no promises to a lost person in the future. The only promise he gives to you is for today. Today. He says, if you'll repent, ask for forgiveness. I have my son in your heart. I will forgive you and save you and give you eternal life. And that's for today. It's for right now. If you're not sure you've done that, pray this prayer with me right now. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for today. Thank you for this opportunity to redeem the time in my life. Today, I ask Jesus in my heart and trust him as my Savior. Today, I recognize I'm a sinner and need a sin. Today, I repent of that sin. Today,
time together this morning to worship you. Thank you for these dear friends that have come, visitors that are with us today. Bless them today. There's so much today left. Help them to slow down and enjoy the rest of this day and enjoy your presence and seek your purpose and claim your promise in their lives for today. And throughout this new week and for the rest of our lives, we will realize how precious each day is you give us. And not waste it. In Jesus' name we pray.